Hi there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Market here with the update video to the Should I Invest $500 on these specs from Modern Horizons. Well, actually not from Modern Horizons, but work around the popular crypto cryptologist commander from Modern Horizon, which at the time was the second most played commander. I think it's jumped up past the squirrel. We can check out an EDH track here in a second. Uh, but this ended up being a pretty good investment, and let's see how well we are doing here. Um, a couple weeks after... Uh, we picked these up. So I did spend about $500. Mainly the big bulk of them was on about 200 Shimmer Dragons between the $2 to, two to $3 mark. And so I do have quite the supply of Shimmer Dragons. The other big purchase was in buying up what I could of the uh, Erdwald Illuminators in the foil. I did buy up some normal Illuminators thinking we could get an uncommon that might be able to reach 50 cents or a dollar and then start buy listing for 25 cents. And that shouldn't be overlooked because after shipping costs and uh, what we have with now the Card Kingdom or if you go through Troll and Toad fees, um, those it's still profitable if you got in around seven, eight cents, which I did with the Erdwall Illuminator. So if you can go and look at the video, uh, it's a video previously to this one on the Rogue Market channel. You can see uh, my reasoning in investing in these two particular cards. Uh, t sometimes I like to go wide, meaning I like to invest in like a couple play sets of every card that work with cards that are coming out. Uh, other times I like to go deep if I do identify a card that is undervalued comparatively speaking to the supply and how much demand it should create. So that's what I did with both the Shimmer Dragon and the Erdwald Illuminator. Kind of wishing I would have got a little more wider on like the Illuminator type specs, all the other things that worked with uh, clues or investigate. Uh, but I did decide on mainly the foils and, but I did go little transparency. I did go pretty deep on the normals and the normals really haven't paid off yet. I'm hoping though that another clue or, or another investigate type card Card comes out in the future, uh, possibly even with a you know two three sets down the road, they make another commander that actually does work with investigator and mechanic that does then and does illuminator does not get printed in that. Then possibly we could have this card finally outstretching the supply. The kind of the tough thing with these uncommons from back during the Shadows of Innistrad era. His uncommons were very, very common in the scope of things because we were still opening up a lot of the draft booster box products and, and drafts were huge back in the day here. And what we're seeing right now is the opposite effect happening is cards like the um, the iteration, the expensive iteration or the there's even in the Sprite Dragon, there's there's quite a few uncommons that have reached the oh, $10 for some of these $10 uncommons, which is unheard of in this day and age. And I think it goes to show that most of the money is being uh, gobbled up by like the collector's edition. So instead of having these bulk amounts of cards out there, we're actually having a bigger spread of like rares and mythics not being as rare comparatively speaking to uncommons or commons were in the past. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting topic for another day of talking about why uncommons now are a lot more investable than they used to be uh, during the good old draft years. So let's take a look at the Shimmer Dragon and see where we're at. You can see that Shimmer Dragon is doing quite well at $9. This is the only version you can get it in in the brawl. You can see the TC market price is now, that's a little bit off the screen here, but the TC market price is, uh, it is currently at uh, $7.50 for eBay. TC market price is around seven is the one selling and the mid price is $8.99. Uh, we can go over here to the TC player and we can see that the first page does have a few listings here around, but if you actually add up the shipping, this one would be 10, this one's also 10, this one's nine, uh, this one's also around 10 bucks. Uh, this is the first free shipping over, over 30 is at two copies at $3 if you were to get in on the over 35 shipping from this particular vendor. So reality, if you're gonna be buying multiples of these, you're gonna be paying more than uh, that TC mid with the shipping included you're more likely going to be around the $8 to uh, mark. There are only 40 listings of Shimmer Dragon on TC Player, which is a very good sign for the card. And if you look at the four or more, there isn't very many uh, listings for the four or more, just nine listings in this little uh, right here. It's starting to get competitive. I did set the benchmark, though. We were the only one uh, under $10.00. $9.99 for a while here, and it looks like people are going to undercut me. So I don't know where my exit point's gonna be. Like I said, I do have a reasonable amount of these, like 100 of these cards, because I did go between two and $300, I think was my investment point for Shimmer Dragons. I think I have a, few, a little bit over 100 copies of these. So I might actually uh, undercut this Heartless Cards person and get around around the $8. I think the $8 still puts, after about 18% fees and shipping, still puts me way, way profitable uh, for the, especially if I can sell them in multiples um, 
then it's, it's very, very profitable for the Shimmer Dragons. Uh, the biggest problem with like TCG Player with rares under four bucks, under about four or five dollars, is it's actually just the listing fee that they charge or just the transaction fee. It ends up being the big chunk of your uh, profit margin right there. So that's why I, I kind of discourage people from selling on TCG Player for anything under, you know, four to five bucks or otherwise you need to uh, hopefully put your shipping uh, price up substantial so people actually want to put a big cart full and that way that transaction fee doesn't just absolutely kill you for TC player still wish there was an alternative to TC player you can use things like card sphere uh, but typically still as a store that's how I get rid of the the, the vast majority of my bulk is just here locally uh, but after that um, then I, I typically like to use buy lists. I like, it used to be better in person. So I'd wait to a big event and unload a, a, a huge amount of my inventory at the event, because actually the buy list at events are razor thin. Um, I've talked about this before in, uh, other episodes of the rogue market or even the rogue deck builder that it was surprising to me the first time that I ever went to on the backside of a GP when I used to be involved with Cool Stuff Inc. and Gathering Magic that I learned that they brought a lot of cash. They actually didn't bring a lot of inventory. They brought just, you know, like a million dollars of cash to try to unload four cards. That these GPs were a buying spree, not a selling spree. And if you waited till like day one, day two, when vendors started to get desperate because they wanted to unload all of their cash, they'd increase their buy list for a lot of cards. And so really that day two, uh, going around and comparing prices, you'd find very razor thin margins. For, so something like a Shimmer Dragon, you find a buy list paying seven bucks and another vendor selling for like eight or nine bucks. And it was, it's, it's, I've actually found the point at GPs where you could find a negative spread, meaning you could find someone that was actually buying for cheaper than some or for more expensive than someone was selling you to actually go make a quick buck right there it really don't, wasn't worth like the amount of time that that requires wasn't worth your time especially being an event and everything else going up there but i did find that interesting that there is that arbitrage opportunity right there at gp so i'm hoping gps come back because this is another outlet that you can actually unload uh, quite a substantial amount of your specs at those and still make a pretty good there's no transaction fees there's no paper trail there's nothing like that that's really good for gps uh to to make the best bang for your buck all right if we actually check over at card kingdom same thing they're out of stock they've been slowly increasing this um, I think that this is all automated through Card Kingdom, so they're going to now increase this probably when they get some more inventory in to $6, and their buy list is also something that has been increasing um, the first bit. Yep, we're profitable now. We are right, we are razor to the point where I think the most expensive I got in was $329 for Simmer Dragon, so if I were to do credit, that would be profitable, but once that goes above that route, when we're up to the $4 or $5 range, if they do end up buy, buying them for that, then we're very profitable for the buy list, and that's typically what I like to do. Yeah, people are like, oh wow, that's a lot difference, you know, 5 to 8 on TC Player, but when all is said and done without the headache and hassle, a lot of times buy listing for that that smaller margin ends up being the best bang for your buck rather than going through packages and TCG player fees and all of the possible returns and, and all the all the headache that goes along uh, with selling on something like eBay or Amazon or TCG player. I often prefer to just get that big chunk buy list uh, going. So we have the, the Illuminator too has been increased over here at Card Kingdom, you can still find tons of copies on TCG Player for 10 cents. So this has a ways to go for the Illuminator. But the good news is the foil is performing pretty well uh they've haven't increased their sell list because they haven't got new inventory in which also kind of makes it weird for their buy list because again automation is weird with card kingdom it goes off sales and so they need to actually sell product before either one of them will go up in price and unfortunately some of these get stuck unless there's human intervention uh to increase their 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 uh, buy list and their uh, selling price of particular cards so we go over here too with the illuminator over in the erdwald illuminator and you can see there are tons of copies still available on tc player for the luminator so again it's going to take another uh, clue and i think this spec is just going to be a pretty bad spec comparatively speaking but again even buying hundreds of copies in at seven cents is what i was was paying for these cards isn't that bad um, if there is a reprint that of course will kill the spec at this point, it does seem like a reprint is more, um, feasible than another card coming out that actually works with it without this getting reprinted. So I might just have to kind of cut my losses on that. They are buying them at card kingdom though. I believe we go back over to the, yeah, they are still buying them for 10 cents. 10, 10 cents is pretty decent to get out of the, the herb wall luminaire. That's what kind of always like makes me shake my head with these TC players. Why well, at this point, why aren't you just buy listing them? 
Uh, there's 60 right there. You can make more going the Card Kingdom route than you can uh, off the TCG players. But especially if someone even pays your shipping a buck ten and then pays the um, you know buys buys 28 cents worth of uh, and at that point they probably don't even want to play set of them. I mean you are net loss after you actually ship the card plus play the TCG uh, player transaction fee and whatnot. So a lot of times people just don't understand that. You just have to cut your loss I guess guess to build your TCG player um rating all in all i guess it might be profitable but yeah i've never understood why like these people do the mass selling here of these like low end cards uh, rather than going the buy list route and let a bigger vendor actually deal with them all right so that's all i have for this particular video i think in the next video we are going to take a look at some of the cards from the adventures in the forgotten realms let's just take a quick one right now and see which ones that are actually seeing the most play so we have first of all we have tiamat tiamat that is seeing the most amount of decks that are being listed on EDA track. Um, I, I don't particularly like looking at five color commanders because a lot of times they're all over the place for cards that are going in them, but we can still look at the ones that are seeing the most play. Yeah, we're not going to see many cards that are actually having uh, a lot of synergy with Tiamat, maybe like this Crux of Fate because of the dragon specific stuff. Maybe you could go on like the Ur Dragon and all the dragons. Um, the Dragon Lord Servants looking more interesting here. Um, there are like the, the good old ones like the Dragon Speaker Shaman. Those are going to be uh, high synergy cards. Look at this already 62%. Hey, our Dragon Tempest is going back up from Iconic Masters. And we have some other ones uh, that might we might be able to identify some low supply versus the um, demand that this is going to create. But typically, this is what happens in five color. Maybe this. So is this actually a huge dragon thing? Maybe we should actually read it. So when team enters the battlefield, if you cast it, search library for up to five dragons, not named team that have different names, reveal them and put them in your hand. Okay, so this is like a Niv Mazette type card that's going to go get dragons. So yeah, you're going to want to get the dragons and then start to have the wombo combos. There are a couple of two two card combos with like a Tarka. Uh, giving dragons double strike and then there's another dragon that also works with a Tarka doubling their power I believe or just a Tarka so this one's poised to probably raise because this is going to go in the vast majority of the decks and then we have you know, your typical one like Terror of the Peaks like Lathless that are going to go in here Dragon Lord Coal Gun uh, hasn't had a reprint this is actually pretty interesting there and then your usual spot suspects like the Herald's Horn that's going to be good um, there are a few other cards that do go and yeah this is the, the Scourge of Valkus this one actually looks like a pretty good pick it did get a reprint here but is this going to be this isn't a commander right is this actually in the set in the set i'd have to do some more research for tiamat to see how it's going to be distributed yeah it looks like it's actually going to be in a deck here right that's not the symbol or is it the symbol again we'll have to do some research before i start saying hey buy this card buy this card because if that's the case if this is going to be a pre-con you got to assume that many of these dragons are going to be printed in uh, this deck and then th that there goes their chance of actually being viable specs so uh, maybe we'll take a look at Tiamat as a, a, a potential card here um, you know it looks beautiful with cards like Realm Walker this one is probably going to go up in value and I think that Realm Walker already was on the move um, because this set is going to be another set I believe that does have a lot of card types that are that do matter yeah, that's another thing too. All the cards from Zendikar, like the Cleric Rogue, all the ones that worked off the party, I wonder if they're going to have a lot of synergy. We'll have to keep wait, wait and see uh, if they do because those, of course, are just dust specs at that point. But yeah, it does look like Realm Walker. I think Realm Walker is just a good spec anyway, but the potential for Realm Walker of getting a reprint is very, very high. I think this is going to be an evergreen card in many Commander decks going forward. Uh, they're just going to shoot in when they can as a, a card that can go in a deck. So uh, we'll be looking at that. We can look at some of the minor um, or the other commanders that are seeing play. I typically do like these ones a little bit better because they are more uh, streamlined of what they're going to be put in the deck. So this Drizzt does double strike when it enters the battlefield, uh, create a legendary 4-1 green cat. Uh, whenever a creature dies, if it has power greater than Drizzt's power, put a number of plus one, plus one counter on Drizzt equal to the difference. So Wrath of Bad, I, I, I think that this is going to be a plus one, plus one counter deck. Let's see how people are going to actually run them with like hardened scales. Is going to be uh, one of the most... Uh, played cards in here it looks like greater good yeah that's an interesting one with greater good because yeah you do want to sacrifice creatures yeah it whenever creatures have had power greater yep greater good is probably a, a poised for a spike here um as yeah eldritch evolution too looks super super good here and some of these cards like galta uh yeah those look pretty good um any any big dumb green creatures i think are going to be very well uh, position for this particular commander and any of the the usual sack outlook so definitely greater good is is the standout card and again is this a card that's actually in the set it actually does this does look like the set symbol 
or is it going to be getting uh, some sort of support as far as a commander deck that, that synergize with it? And then these cards just end up getting printed. But that would be definitely my pick right off the bat. That's what EDH Reg a lot of this times is just duh. It's just duh stuff, greater good, low supply from Battle Bond. That's been, been, been definitely enough time uh, for greater good. Greater good's had some massive spikes in the past too. Uh, so we have double masters okay so double masters it was reprinted so it does have quite a bit of supply here it does seem like the these it's been flat which is a good sign it hasn't been going down so usually like a card that's been reprinted as quick as double masters if it's still going down you know that it's still maybe got a ways to go uh but yeah it hasn't seen a print it's not on the list which is good for it um just ninth edition urza saga double masters and battle bond all of them are, are, are quite low in supply in the scope of things like none of these are the same as as something like a, a modern standard set like this is all pre-modern standard sets and two specialty sets in the form of double masters and battle bond so i think that this greater good is an absolute just duh of a spec right now and that's what you want to actually look for when picking these shimmer dragons like not to toot my own horn even though i do love to toot my own horn um that's you know this is this is this shimmer dragon wasn't something a savant had to pick it was just so duh you just looked at the the um, the cryptologist and what cards he wanted in it looked for a low supply card that was comparatively speaking lower supply from the other cards that were going in them and pull the trigger on that particular card. Uh, so yeah, there's some there's some goodies here. There's some absolute goodies for this particular commander. I think it's going to be a pretty popular commander too. I would say that things like the hardened scales are probably poised to go up too. Anything that works with plus ones encounters or utilizing plus ones encounters will probably want to be in here. And then all the cards that do have easy ways to create big creatures there you go the primeval protector um that you can get a 10 10 out and then sack it with like a greater good but greater good seems to be the card for this particular one so i'd also look at the artifacts so we have like the phyrexian altar and the Ashnod's altar those also might be something that work with it or any other green or white sacrifice card i'm not really um i'm not really anything coming off the top of my head that actually works with sacrifice from greed or white but there might actually be some the other thing i look for is like hidden gems ones that people have forgotten about that then you can pull the trigger on and then go in here so it's like some some obscure card that allows you to sacrifice a green creature for something something yeah i think i remember one wasn't there one that actually you gain life and drew cards equal to the sacrifice creatures that's toughness though i believe is what I'm thinking of. It's like a card from an M set. Someone in the comment sections can can find it for me. There it is. There we go. Life's Legacy. So additional cost of cast that you sacrifice creature draw. Oh no, you draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. Life's Legacy. Here's another one that is just absolutely going to be a shoe in um, for this this card. Then we of course we saw like the Eldritch Evolution. Uh, Birthing Pod will probably go in here. Um, let's see here. You have some of these that you can you can cheat into play and then sacrifice and then in the turn those are going to want to go in here. Uh, utility artifacts, yeah, Great Henge will probably of course want to go in there, but it's kind of very evergreen. Uh, Marari's Wake again. Here's another commander that perfectly synergizes with Marari's Wake. I know that just got a reprint in the old school border. Yeah, we got Hardened Scales, Branching Evolution, which puts uh, more counters on them. But what I want to find is if we can find some sort of obscure card that allows you to sacrifice creatures with low supply, that's absolutely what you want to do. Um, I think something like the High Market is a card that would... I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it's not showing up here. High Market allows you to sacrifice a creature just to gain a life, I believe. Isn't that what the card does? I think that should go in here and see if that's actually been... Okay, so these are just lands, lands, not utility lands is where... Uh, we'd be finding things like the the high market, uh, but it is not in here at the moment. And I'm surprised also that the artifacts don't have like the the sacrifice artifacts here. So that I guess is your 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 chore or my chore I guess is look for anything that has the sacrifice. You can use other tools now with the search bar in like the gather or load something up like MT Joe and just type in sacrifice, and that way you can find some. Uh, pretty cool synergies with them and white's got to have some I'm, I'm pretty sure that white has some sacrifice cards or cards that sack themselves and again if you can get your power above um, this commander you're gonna get a lot of value from it so um, yep so I guess it's only putting the difference though maybe it's not oh it is double strike though so it's a Voltron commander that wants to get bigger by sacrificing big fatties so yep yep Anyway, let's take a look really quickly at the last one here that looks like it's it's uh, has potential, which is this dwarf. Again, there hasn't been a lot spoiled from 
the set so far but each creature you control with plus two plus zero each creature you control gets plus two plus zero for each equipment attached to it okay there's going to be some easy ones here stoneforge mystic uh, a lot of the tutors allow you to go to equipments equipments had a lot of support lately uh, so let's see what synerg synergizes with this particular card and again you want to look for the low supply one uh, commander legends has some good ones that are poised to pop at this point, uh, SRAM looks good. Sagrada's Aid looks good as a potential. I mean, these had had very, very recent reprints. Open the Armory had a recent reprint. Uh, but if you can find one like Nahiri, here's one. Uh, Nahiri does look pretty good uh, because it does allow you to look for equipment. So let's see if Nahiri... I don't think Nahiri's had a reprint. So Nahiri... Nahiri, Nahiri, Her Heir of the Ancients. Is that the one that we're looking for? I think it is. And Xenica Rising, though, okay, it does have that going against it. It does seem to be flat, which is good. It's not going down anymore. Uh, but the problem with uh, Xenica Rising is Xenica Rising is like a Consitark here, or it's like a, um, yeah, Consitark here is a good one because all the money from Zendikar Rising got funneled into those fetch lands in the collector's editions and all the other box toppers. The box topper is going to eat up the vast majority of money. Uh, so it's going to take a long time for Zendikar Rising to go up in value for anything that's not called a fetch land. Uh, so this one, though, does seem, comparatively speaking, quite low. Um, they did print the hell out of collector's edition. So I'm, I'm assuming this is why it's so inexpensive is you do have the Zendikar Rising foils that are just... Uh, probably more in existent than the non-foils just because the collector's edition the ability to get those um so nahiri though does look like a pretty decent spec uh for the uh brunor and there are some other good goodies here that haven't had reprints for a while like the stone here giant i believe this is either mystery or or an um in the list uh but even things like Halvor got a battle could be poised to go up and, and some of these other lower supply ones um, that do synergize well. What else does he want to do? Is there anything else this guy wants to do? You may pay zero rather than pay the equip cost for your first equip. Okay, so any equipment that has a high equip cost is going to want to go in this one as well. There's your little Black Blade Reforged, even though it does allow legendary creatures to get equipped. Your Colossus Hammer is probably going to go up again. It's still a Pioneer deck that is pretty popular. Um, there are something like the Argentum Armors that have high equip costs. Um, yeah, the, the high equip cost ones, the ones I'm looking for, and all the other support cards that, that go for tutoring or looking for them are probably poised to go up uh, in this particular list as well. Um, yeah. Wow, Steel Sharpers gives up to 25 bucks already, huh? That is pretty crazy. So those are the ones I'd be looking for. We'll keep our eye on the um, Forgotten Realms spoilers and see other ones that might be more popular than these two. But all, all in all, these top three probably should have a lot of um demand for these particular cards other people are already putting out deck lists these are also a good way if you find a big um a big youtuber that's throwing out a deck list for these ones that's also going to lead to spikes and again you want to look for some that that, that might be some obscure cards uh metal craft that could work with this um lands that have utility that that actually are able to work with this those are the type of cards that i think are pretty decent specs uh for Sun Forger, there's a good one. It's pretty low supply, uh, comparatively speaking. And I know it's had some reprints even, even recently. But we'll, we'll, we'll go a, d a deeper dive in these in the future and see what we can come up with. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, so keep an eye on this for an update video for the Forgotten Realms. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and start selling my Shimmer Dragons. Uh, so just a little bit of a, a heads up there if you want to undercut me. Now is your time because I'm going to start putting my supply back on the market. This has been Kevin with the Rogue Market. Thanks for watching.